combat was removed from the completionist cape. Reaper title was, you know, removed from, from the requirements, which is to get one kill at every boss in the game. Uh, just to ask you, like, full on blanket, why did that happen? And how do you feel about that happening? Hello and welcome back to Jagace HQ. I am here with Mod Jack, and today we are going to be talking about design philosophy of requirements. Requirements are a fairly contentious thing. I think everything that is released into the game has a certain subset of requirements, things that you likely have to do before you can engage with that content. With relation to that, I wanted to ask you some questions about some of the recent quests. So. Uh, the city of Sentiston, I think, is one that you know has some very, very strong rewards. And I know in the community, a number of players were unsure as to the requirements with regard to them being probably a little bit on the lower end for an endgame player. The, the, the requirements for the quest and the rewards for the quest aren't super tied together. Like, higher, higher requirements does justify higher rewards. But I wouldn't say that lower requirements necessarily requires lower rewards, if that makes sense. The obvious counter example would be like, um, you know, the, the surgeon ring from Broken Home was best in slot for quite a while. And it was inappropriate that that came from a novice quest, I would say. I, didn't, I, don't, think, I don't think a novice no requirements quest should be rewarding a best in slot PVM item. Okay. But, but in, in terms of sort of participating in the storyline, you know, you've had to complete. It's not like Sea of Sentison had no requirements. It required you to have completed the storyline up until that point. If you're yes. following along with the storyline, I don't think the quests in the storyline should have to be extremely high level, very exclusive content in order to provide good rewards. Okay. Whether, whether, the, whether the balance of any individual rewards, you could argue like, well, maybe it was a bit too good, maybe the requirements are a little bit too low. But as a general philosophy, I wouldn't say that like moderate requirements means bad reward, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, so just conceptually, a you know more mid-level quest can still reward things that are very good, yeah. but not if it's at the extent of Broken Home giving you a best in slot item. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, like we, we're always experimenting and we're always trying to find a new balance for it. Um, I think there's probably more that we could do with the quest is a component of a larger reward. Like we can see that with the um, with the Pontifex ring. Yes, that gets um, expanded upon. Ultimately, that you end up with is quite good. But if, to get all, to unlock all of its features, you have to do quite a lot, not just complete a few quests. So that that works well in the sense that it is technically a quest reward. But you have to have done the PVM content as well. So well, as you say, you don't have to PVM it, right? But it is PVM content. Yes. You have to have done some other content to get that final reward and complete the quest. And I think that's in a good place. Okay. Um, and it, it happened that there wasn't an appropriate piece of content around the launch of City of Sentinel to tie that sort of thing too. But the, the integration of quest rewards into the game a little bit better, I think, works quite well. Especially now that we have this, the storyline includes non-quest content, which didn't really used to be the case prior to a couple of years ago. So there'd be, there was sort of no association between you know, the boss that was coming out and the quest that was coming out. They didn't really have anything to do with each other. So it would feel a bit weird if the quest required you to kill the boss or required you to collect a certain number of drops from the boss in order to unlock its full power. That would feel a bit strange. Yes. But now it feels very natural because the two are quite closely associated. Yeah, I think it's almost a, a player choice thing as well, where it gives you the option to upgrade it and, and get yeah. something really strong. And it also gives you yeah. guys the opportunity to put out something that is actually yeah. quite useful on a quest that doesn't have the highest requirements. Yeah. Uh, that being said, there are a couple kind of specific requirements for some of these quests that uh, I wanted to bring up as I personally think they're, you know, I don't want to say head scratchers necessarily, but uh, one of the primary rewards for the City of Sentence and Quest, it's upgrades to uh, it's a series of new spells in the Ancient Spellbook. And it doesn't require Desert Treasure. It requires you to start Desert Treasure, yeah. but not to complete it. And that to me stuck out as like a yeah. strange requirement point where there had to have been some kind of thinking behind that and I would I would love to be kind of taken through that. I mean the general philosophy and I want to say general philosophy rather than rule is that there was a hard there was a hard requirement break with I mean with missing presumed death. Now actually like it's it's confusing because the new storyline starts with the world wakes but the world wakes is actually quite a high level quest and the missing presumed death is a very low level quest. If we were going to go back and restructure it narratively then missing presumed death would require the world wakes. But then a novice quest requires a high level quest, so it's a bit of an odd structure. Um, but with that hard break in requirements, essentially anything before that point is kind of history. And then we have the six age storyline going forward from Missing Presumed Death. So broadly speaking, we wouldn't expect a modern quest, by which I mean anything post Missing Presumed Death, to require something from before that point as a general policy. That doesn't mean that we wouldn't ever do that. 
and obviously it gets really muddled when we talk about like some of the reworks. So like is um, Diamond in the Rough an old quest or a Before new quest? Or after. Yeah. It's, it's a bit it's a bit of a muddle, yeah, of right? It's not really clear where where that falls. And and in any case, like if there was a compelling reason to break that rule, then we would. In the case of Desert Treasure, um, I can I I wouldn't I don't think I would ever have locked the quest behind Desert Treasure. I can see an argument for locking the reward behind Desert Treasure, and that's something that we don't do that often. Well, I mean, like, it effectively is because it's separately. on the spellbook well, yeah, that you don't yeah. unlock without. <clears throat> Desert but Treasure. complete, we could have we could have said. You have to have completed Desert Treasure in order to use this, um, and that to me is slightly separate from the from the the quest itself. Um, it, 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 I guess it's easier to understand if it's just put on the on the requirements list. I mean, the, the example here is just the tension that we always have here is, as I'm sure everybody does. Like, I would consider my position to be the sort of moderate compromise position because on the one hand, I've got a sort of I've got a, a, a business objective to get as many people into as much content as possible all the time. So there's always a push to sort of I think it, I think it, sorry, I don't want to oversimplify, but I think it is just a push to lower requirements. Just let's make sure all of our content is as accessible as possible because then more people can play it. Um, and on the other hand, we have a fairly hardcore player base who's, who they want, the, the way I think about it, I think in a positive sense is they want their past efforts to be rewarded. They want to feel yep. like the investment and the work that they put into their account is being um, upheld. A con yeah, it, it's, it's, being, it's being recognized. By content which is exclusive for that group of players. So then, what we have is like a tension between those two perspectives. And the, the, I think it's easy to be cynical about the business perspective, but it's not just the business perspective. It's also the the returning player perspective, the new player perspective, the the I want to get in and do things sort of. You want to give access to content to not just yeah. in game hardcore super exactly. committed players yeah. because it's the best content that's yeah. coming out. It's recent, it's fresh, and you want to make it accessible yeah, beyond exactly. just a business thing. But there's a but there's a but there's a there's a compromise to reach between those two positions. We don't just require everything for everything. Like there, so there is a player perspective that every dungeon should be quest locked, every quest should be quest locked, like everything should be quest locked going all the way back to you know Cook's assistant and. The game itself is a kind of you know ever increasing tower of inaccessibility, and I don't think that that extreme way of doing it just isn't realistic from the point of view of providing content for the game. On the other hand, everything having no requirements at all also I don't think is that's not the right way to build the game because it doesn't reward players' investment, right? Like players yeah, want something absolutely. to work towards; they want something to to unlock. Um, I, I think my personal take would be that we've skewed a little low recently, but it's hard to it's hard to push up. Do you have any like specific examples that you feel like were lower than they could have been or should have been in in your opinion, whether that's the extinction the quest one, or the one else? that really stands out to me? I mean, I I, th I tend to think about quests rather than skill requirements. Although, like broadly speaking, I think we could probably put a bit a few more skill requirements on quests. But it's it's interesting. Our, our kind of our design philosophy on that has changed. It used to be, sorry, it's, it's not intentionally changed. It just sort of drifted over time. It used to okay. be that skill requirements for quests were very, um, like they emerged from the quest design themselves. It was like, well, this quest requires you to, I mean, like the yeah. hero's quest, you have to mine the rock. Yeah, exactly. So it has a mining requirement on it. And actually the inclusion of skilling moments in quests, I'd say, has sort of drifted down. No, it's not an intentional philosophy or strategy on our part. It just, there's been a way more emphasis on stories and characters and going through the world gate to strange places and, and a lot lower emphasis on 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 just skilling within the world so skill requirements haven't naturally emerged from the quest design so sometimes so for, for a while we were sort of artificially putting like oh this quest just requires divination 90. why oh, well, not 90 but you know it's an end game it, quest it, yeah it so just, it it just have, it's a high level yeah. quest so it has that and there was some negative feedback from players of like well why do i and it, it's not it's not especially strong feedback but some negative feedback along the lines of you know requirements should exist for a reason why is this even here um, so we started cutting requirements that didn't make sense, and then we ended up drifting into, well, actually, quests don't require that many skills. Um, How do you feel about the quests that have a set of requirements to complete the quest, and then a suggested list of, you know, for the full story, canonically, these are also really good quests to do if you want full comprehension understanding. So an example of that would be, um, like, The World Wakes is a perfect example, because that is a yeah. super high-level endgame quest you only unlock a specific reward if you've completed all of the subquests, but the bulk, um, you know, reward story, quest itself, experience rewards are basically locked behind nothing. That's, a, it's tricky. Sorry, so there's, there's two slightly separate questions there. One is, one is the story and how recommended quests play into the story. And the other is, um, 
the rewards and how the recommendations play I into think, the rewards. Yeah, even going a, a little broader than that. Yeah. Conceptually, how do you feel about supplying two different sets of recs, the actual requirements, and then these are suggested? Because it's been done, I don't want to say terribly often, but there are probably a, a half dozen quests that have yeah. sort of, this is a requirement. And I know in the community, a lot of players go, well, if these are suggested for understanding, why aren't these just the requirements? They yeah. probably should be. Yeah. Um, the, the the analogy I often use for this is like is 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 like books in a TV, in a books in a book series or or series in a TV show or films in a film series that that when they publish a film called like Star Wars Seven, there's an implicit suggested requirement of Star Wars Six, but it's not a hard requirement of Star Wars Six. So like the the, the group I feel like we have to support. And I think we could do a better job of supporting, to be honest, in the way that we present information, are people who want to play the story in order. Like, that's me. That's the type of player I am. Like, even for me, if, if I'm playing through a game series and there's no actual connection between the stories of the games, let's say Final Fantasy, I'd still rather play them in order, even though there's no actual story. That's just how I think. I'd rather do things in order. And I know there are players that would rather play RuneScape in order. They don't want to jump into the story with Missing Presumed Death. They want to play it from the beginning and get the context and play through. And I totally understand that. And I think we need to do a better job of allowing those players to do that. Where I disagree is with the people who think that people should be forced to do that. That you're not allowed to jump into the story at any point where you like. Because there are players that don't think in that way. They don't think about stories. They have to play from the start. Yeah, my my perspective on, on RuneScape and my approach to it, I definitely have little interest in playing through everything in order or observing every bit of story. I am yeah. very much rewards based if this has something that I need or I would like to do then I will you know I will I'll complete that activity and I do enjoy RuneScape lore but not in the sense of reading the quest dialogue necessarily my mm -hmm. spacebar does get a lot of workouts I will happily admit I that won't, I, won't take I am someone that uh, someone that does that but at the same time I will then go back and I'll go watch a lore video or yep. you know make sure I have understanding of yep. you know what has gone on in the RuneScape world to get to this point so I think it's it's really fair to say there are I think multiple players that you know do things in different ways. There's a belief there's a belief I see from players that if you were forced to go back and complete everything, then you would enjoy it more. And I don't see the logic of that perspective. Like like you you will find people occasionally who say, oh well, I wasn't going to bother doing questing, but now that I've gone through all of these quests, actually I did kind of enjoy the law. But that that doesn't seem to be the rule. That seems that to be the exception. Almost stems from your point earlier, which was that sometimes players feel like something that they did in the past um, or went through in the past, whether that's doing every single quest in order to get to a certain point, um, they want to feel that validated. Yeah. And they enjoyed yeah. that, and they see other yeah, people, no, that's absolutely you know, the and case. they yeah. feel potentially yeah. it's maybe a projection, but it's cheapening other people's experience I because think, that's and, not and, congruent with their experience. Yeah. No, that's that's a really good comparison to make because actually there, there is a there is a point there of it's not fair that I had to complete all the prerequisites and someone else didn't. Like, like, um, um, like obviously, so Prif was hardlocked. Yes. If we released, say, Arpa Sandra, or Men I mean, Men actually, we did get this with Menophos, right? Menophos didn't require all desert quests to access. And players who had completed those desert quests in the past and had anticipated that Menophos would be a reward for it were disappointed that people were able to access it without having completed those prerequisites. They felt like their investment wasn't being recognized. And that's very difficult. It's particularly difficult when some of those prerequisites are ancient, like 15 yeah. years old, you know. Um, and we're effectively talking about locking a piece of modern content behind a piece of ancient content. And philosophically, it seems like you don't really want to do that a yes. whole lot. Yes, in, 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 unless it's been specifically sort of carefully curated and we say like, like, because we want people to come to RuneScape and we want people to play RuneScape and we want to show, like, we believe that the content that we make is good, right? We, yeah, you know, of course. Yeah. And so, and so we want to push people towards our content and we don't necessarily, it, it depends, it, that's the thing, it depends entirely on what the prerequisite is. Um, so I, I, like, I'm not very keen on Iclaren's Little Helper, for example. So I wouldn't want to lock something behind Iclaren's Little Helper because I don't think Iclaren's Little Helper shows RuneScape at its best. And the, I think you have to be quite invested in RuneScape already to play through Clarence Little Helper and go, oh yeah, this is this is this is RuneScape. Yeah. I love it. I played through that quest two weeks ago, and yeah, right. I mean, there are a number of quests that, especially the older ones, kind of to your point, do not feel like a modern, current year yeah. game. Yeah, and I think that's okay for people who've been playing for a very long time because you know we understand what RuneScape was like, and you know yeah. you can look back and you're like, wow, that animation is crazy, or that really didn't stand up. And it's kind of a, a fun experience, but to a new player, I, I can understand the perspective yeah. that it sort of cheapens their their gameplay experience a little bit compared to the kinds of things that you can pump out now. Yeah. And, and 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 again, though, we can't. We're not just abandoning RuneScape. It's not like we're ashamed of RuneScape and we want to hide it. We don't want to just pretend that, say, 
God Wars 3 is the only thing that exists. But but it's about that delicate compromise of what is and if, so if we let if we let just the logic of the story dictate the requirements like oh well if I'm so helper has to be required because the story says it should be required we're sort of we're sort of um, we're not making the decision based on what we believe is best for the game we're just letting the story dictate it which I don't think is the right I don't think that's the right way to think about it it makes a lot of logical sense to to do it in the way that you are doing because. I mean, in a perfect universe, maybe you, you there's going back and revamping every single old quest so they all stand yeah. out. But that would be the ideal. That's but... I'm assuming that's just totally unfeasible yeah. or just not high priority. Yeah, I mean, we you can see where we started that with the signature heroes reworks, and we got through what five quests in about three years. Yeah, something like that, and they were very high quality. I mean, those are fantastic quests, and that's the thing. Like from a, and so from a from a like there were questers who were delighted, and like if you ask questing players, they'll say. Probably a lot of them will pick those quests that are in their top five or, or something. Probably no one's favorite quest, but definitely top five. Um, but they weren't doing anything for for the most engaged part of our player base. A lot of a lot of our players are saying like, "Where where's the new content? Where's the high level content? What what's there for me? I don't want to do a rework of Prince Ali Rescue. <laughs> I want to do something new." Yeah, of course. Um, with high level rewards, with high level requirements, and so they didn't. It, it's very difficult to draw the right balance between sort of reworking the low level and. And yeah, providing for the that, high level. That seemed more like an update that was good for new players, yeah, people coming exactly. to the game initially, yeah. and specifically people who are huge, huge into RuneScape questing and lore, which I would consider like a fairly niche sub community, perhaps. It's even larger are, than you'd think. There but are it a isn't lot of majority. players that are there, yeah. but it's yeah. not like eighty percent of yeah. the player base is going to want to, you know, yeah. replay a quest that they've they've, they've previously completed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think we were surprised when we started doing those reworks. We were we were surprised at the level of sort of. But I don't want to have to do this quest again. What was it we first? It was um, Gunner, my first project was um, Gunner Gunner's Ground from reworking Romeo and, Romeo Juliet. and Juliet. That was my first project. I was I was told to remove Romeo and Juliet and replace it with something else, and which in retrospect I'm not sure was. I mean I don't. It's it's complicated because obviously there's the IP stuff is complicated. I'm glad it exists in old school. Put it that way. I was surprised on launch how many players were kind of grumpy that they had to complete it again, and I'm like, it takes like ten minutes. Like, what are you talking about? But there was genuine frustration that. Something they considered ticked off was now. I, I mean, I'm mean, just remembering. I'm pretty sure that we un we unset credit for it, and you had to complete it again. I am not a hundred percent on that, but I right. will say I will admit I am someone that fits into that category. Yeah. I did not like having to on my Max Main account have to replay the Demon Slayer quest that I completed yeah. 15 years ago. Yeah. It wasn't like the rework quest was significantly better than the original. It was a lot more fun to play through. It was objectively interesting, but I still definitely fit in the yeah. category of like I should have the option to not have to redo this. And that, I've already that, done it. That attitude very much informed how we thought about that kind of content because if if we're producing content and our our most engaged players, not counting the quest players, are finding like basically we just put a lot of time and effort into something and our most engaged players are annoyed by it rather than pleased by it. I think a lot of that comes down to the player base's sentiment on kind of reward spacing and why players engage with content and complete yeah. it. If you're someone that completed that quest because you wanted the four quest points, redoing it for not any quest points because you've already done you've it, already it yeah. that's not going to feel like it was a good use of time. Yeah. At the Absolutely. same time, yeah, if yeah. it's reward based and it's got a good reward, very cool. And yeah, I think you just find a lot of players play the game for different reasons. So it's yeah. kind of hard to find the balance of. Yeah, and exactly so yeah, and that, that, that circles us back around to like yeah, high level quests are are rewarding for story players, and they should also be, you know, obviously sometimes we don't get it right, but they should also be rewarding for non story players. There should be there should be good use of your time. It's worth bothering to spacebar through the quest for people who aren't <laughs> interested in the story, um, and that doesn't work particularly well at lower level. I mean, we talked about it at the start. Broken Home was worth completing at the time when the ring was yes. good because you know you kind of had to do it. But then it doesn't quite feel right, right? It's a novice quest. It doesn't. So high level quests with requirements, with good rewards feels right. Yes. Anything else kind of feels a bit wrong. But then we end up at, but then the high level records, sorry, the high level quests are too exclusive. So we have to trim some of the requirements off the them to make them a bit more accessible. But you do keep the rewards still. But we do keep the rewards still, yeah. And then I think I think that's part of it as well. The, the last series of quests that you know, were received in, in different ways for many different reasons, but purely from a design reward balancing standpoint, for the requirements, I know a lot of people felt like, wow, this is like the strongest quest in the game with regard to its experience reward for how much, you know, I have to do prior to being able to access it. And is that something that is done 
in a way because the game is you know the game has changed from the last grandmaster quest up to this one it's just xp rates are higher yeah. or anything yeah. like that i mean the basic philosophy for people people often like turn up their nose at the xp rewards from from quests they're basically there to compensate you for your time right like you could have spent the time playing the quest skilling instead and we don't want the quest to feel like it was like it set aside the other rewards the time spent completing the quest should have been better use of your time than scaling. We can't always balance it exactly that way because it obviously depends on the player and the method yeah. and what they would have been of prepared course. to do. But that 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 lamp isn't there to sort of excite you to complete the quest. It's there to compensate you for your time. So then you would say like a driving factor in those lamps getting you know seemingly stronger over time would be actually based on XP rates yeah. possibly going up. It, it's not going to feel like if, okay. if, if it's based on XP rates from 10 years ago, it's not going to feel like fair compensation for your time because you could do better than that now by not questing. Oh, for sure. I mean, when you play through the early game again, yeah. you'll complete an hour long quest and it'll be, here's a 1K, or here's a 250 XP thieving land. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, sweet. <laughs> yeah. I think that makes sense. And that's good insight because I think a player perspective, like I've been playing the game for 17 years. And when I see some of these XP rewards, I'm like, that's a lot of experience comparatively to, to other quests. And I think... Yeah. It's probably one of the the first times the kind of logic dictating that is. It's, it's honestly it's difficult through. because we give we give these huge XP rewards and players look at them and still go, well, "That's not. I could get more than that in the same time. <laughs> like I just go do something." Yeah, I'm sure else you got some of that more. too. So it, it's, it's, we're giving huge amounts of XP away, but they're also not really huge amounts of XP in the context of how long it took you to complete the quest. Is there ever a consideration for Iron Man with regard to the XP rewards? Because I think. You, you said earlier that you're not expecting someone's going to complete the quest for the XP reward, but I think that completely changes in Iron Man mode. Yeah, if, the I mean, meta that... for many skills is to rush a lot of these early quests because you can skip significant parts of, of, of certain skills that are more tedious to train. It's been a while since we did an early quest, and I, I, I don't think we consciously balance with that in mind, but as with everything with Iron Man, it's like if it works out nicely for Iron Man, that's great. Like It's, yeah. it's nice for that to work out for Iron Man, and I'm glad if it does. That isn't something that we're consciously accounting for, I would say, during... I mean, it may be that an individual dev actually is, and I'm not aware of that, but from my point but of view... For the most part, it's balanced it's, around we're not, kind we're of not main saying, account ooh, experience. Ooh, let's creep the XP up or down a little bit because of Iron Man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said we would do that. Okay. No, that's <laughs> interesting. Because I think it has a large impact on, on Iron Man accounts, and I think you get a lot of that, wow, you can fast track a lot of this stuff that I had to do in a, in a very grindy way because with the lower requirements as well, they're very, not only are they new or lapsed player accessible, but they're also way more Iron Man accessible. Yeah. So the like, yeah. no, that's a, not that's to fine. go yeah. too far into metas here, but the, the meta for an Iron Man at, at this current juncture is you're just rushing all of these quests that give you huge lamp rewards, yeah. and then you can basically get up to overloads without actually having to train or blur. And that's like, that's the the strong firm meta. Um, yeah, that's not something that's super super considered or, or problematic. No, yeah, it's, it's kind of a side effect of um it's kind of a side effect of of just the way that the game is designed anyway i mean i i think i would say like on on the on the subject of iron man philosophy i think part of what we part of in, in a sense part of the identity of iron man is figuring out those strategies right and if we designed if we over designed the path for iron man there wouldn't be that strategizing if it was just start at the start of the quest list and work your way down because every single thing on the quest list is worth doing then an iron man account basically would be a quester account yes and it's and it's it's figuring out you know what on that list is worth skipping or what on that work list is worth specifically targeting and doing the requirements for is part of what makes that experience interesting. I would say, for sure. I think I don't mean that as a defense of bad balancing. It's just no, a, it's a happy no, of coincidence course. of the fact that it's not balanced specifically yeah, for Iron Man. Coincidentally, I think a lot of quests feel more worthwhile in Iron Man because that's yeah. just another facet of reward space that would be more mm. beneficial on an Iron than it is on a main because yeah. it is as you now you know mentioned it's 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 balanced around XP rates on a main account, perhaps. So yeah, no, that's that's very interesting. And I personally, I find quests way more rewarding on an Iron Man because, it, and it's predominantly because of that additional XP reward that means a lot more to me on that account. Yeah. I wanted to discuss the completionist cape, which is obviously, you know, a, a very hot topic. topic. Dear to my heart. I think uh, to also a topic that I know a lot of players that are, you know, in that completionist play style are heavily invested in. Um, and I think the, the first point is, I think the completionist cape was initially designed, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, of course, you know, to be a status symbol that showed, I have completed RuneScape. Yep. And I think over the, the course of the last, you know, five, six years, I think that has gradually changed where it sort of means something else, because for most updates, comp requires, you know, a certain amount of completion, 
but a lot of the time it's it's you definitely couldn't make an argument that it was a, a full completion of runescape to have the comp cape it seems like a, yes, a set of individual requirements that yeah. you know occasionally you could even say feel a little arbitrary at times yeah. to say i have engaged with this content for this arbitrary amount of time enough that, to get a check that, mark that's exactly right yeah i've engaged with this content like yeah it would it would be i guess the way i would put it because i spent a lot of time when i was doing the, the comp rework project i spent a lot of time talking to compers and trim compers and trying to find the right like mission statement almost for those different levels i can't remember them off the top of my head but you know, yeah comp is basically like or should be i should say i have I, I i've engaged with this content enough to understand it like i know about this content if someone asks me oh what's that what's the point of doing that how do i do that i can tell them because i've done it I haven't necessarily completed every last tiny part of it. It depends on the size of the piece of content. And so there's, a, there's a topic worth getting into there about the, the weird effect that the existence of comp and achievements has on content. Yeah. Like the existence of comp forces, or sh again, should force, the comp to be considered in the design. So if we, take, if we took the attitude that comp is absolute completionism, which some people do, some, people, some people's vision of comp is, is trim comp or true trim. True trim, yeah. Like some people think that there should be no cape other than true trim, which is essentially I have done absolutely every, every single piece of content. If in it the exists, game. I have yes. done it to completion. And the problem with that is that that has an effect on the way that we think about content. Like say we want, say we want to design a reward shop. So we're designing a piece of content that rewards tokens and it, it's a reward shop. And we want to put, like we want people to engage with the content to some extent, like the reason we've implemented a shop is so you can choose what rewards you get. If you want, you can put more effort and get more rewards. Uh, if you want, you could put even more reward effort in, get even more rewards. And we have the option to put some ludicrously priced reward in that shop that's like just way more, like a reasonable it's player isn't going to go for it. Almost like the pets in the old Dungeoneering token shop, yeah. where some of them cost an absolutely ludicrous yeah. amount of tokens. Right. Something something ludicrous, something that's yes, explicitly absolutely. designed to look unappealing to the majority of players. Like you don't you don't want to get that. It's so yeah. highly priced. But for the extremely hyper-engaged person or the person who really enjoys that content and wants yeah, they, it's, a, it's a badge of honor to say, exactly, exactly. I have engaged with this content an yeah. absolutely ridiculous amount, yeah. and now I have this ridiculous reward that is not... But if we assume that, that something like that has to be on comp, then we don't put it in the game. So the, ex the existence of the philosophy that extreme ludicrous rewards ought to be on comp, sorry, rewards, are, you know... Yeah, yeah, spaces, anything achievable. Or, yeah, if, if, yeah. If, if we had to put them on comp, we wouldn't add them to the game in the first place because we don't. We want there to be levels of accomplishment. So when you say it's, it feels slightly arbitrary what you have to do to get comp, it kind of is. It's kind of like we're trying to judge like a reasonable level of engagement. Because if you've got, once you've unlocked everything else in the shop, right? Yeah. For this hypothetical example, you've unlocked everything else in the shop. You haven't got this extreme reward. You know the content, right? Yes, you yes. never ground out that final reward, but you know the content really well. You've ticked that box, right? Yeah. I do. I, I think it's fine that there's a there's a level of accomplishment above that, which is yeah, you actually did go beyond. Yeah. And it's... get everything, but I think we do need those two levels. I, I I guess it's something that it would just be un unreasonable to yeah. expect any player who wants a comp cape to become this super user who's going to be, you know, and these are small reward spaces that are designed for that very, very specific yeah. individual. Most people aren't supposed to touch it. And yeah. yeah, I think it's really interesting that, and it makes perfect sense that if you, you know, if comp required actually completing RuneScape, you wouldn't be able to, or you have a much tougher time adding that kind of reward that, yeah. you know, makes a, a, a big difference for those players. And I think a good example that comes to mind, uh, maybe not so much recently, but when RuneSpan came out, you've also got your prestiging by collecting runespan points and, and getting yeah. your tiers up. That wasn't something designed for the majority of players to no. get. And yeah, to my exactly. knowledge, that's not a base comp requirement to, to max out your runespan, uh, but it is a trim requirement. Yeah, but by, put, by, by making something a formal accomplishment, putting it on comp, yeah. put, putting an achievement for it, we're, we're almost sort of daring the players to do it. Like we're setting that challenge in front of them. We're saying this is something we expect you to do. Like people look at comp as a checklist of of, of, of things they have to do. Exactly. Now, not all players think in those ways. No, but, but there, in there this, are players this subset yeah. of player that plays to upkeep their comp cape, and yeah, that's exactly. a big thing that yeah. they you know they feel good about having the comp cape, no matter what you put out, even if it you know if it was staring at a wall for X amount of hours, they would do it so they could upkeep their comp cape. Yeah, and so one of the, one of the challenges that we see is. Um, we effectively have two different communities there that have diametrically opposed. Well, sorry, this is less the case now that we took the combat the, the combat benefits. Off yeah, the and we'll get into that after as well. Um, but we we still have these two communities, one of whom sort of want their cape and want the minimum effort. I would say the comp cape was designed for the community that did everything anyway, 
and want that recognized. But we also have the second community of people who want the they recognition want the cape, for they, the minimum yes. amount of investment. And I don't mean they're wrong. I think some, some of the first group might look at the second group and say, yeah. But I, like it's a perfectly legitimate play style. But then we have, like, it's not like there's a universal, there should just be everything or more more on the comp cape. The high effort group want more on the comp cape. The low effort group want less on the less. comp cape. We have to find the right balance. I, I would say, personally, I think we've probably skewed way too low. We can talk into talk a bit about why that hasn't happened, but um, it is yeah, it certainly isn't the case that we should put everything on there because there is a there are players who see it as a sort of um, mandate. I'm sure from a design standpoint, your ideal isn't you don't want a, a significant subset of your player base doing things <clears throat> that they don't want to do within the game just to like I don't yeah know, exactly yeah. I'll yeah, keep a cape. Exactly, it yeah. feels like a, a job yeah. almost at that point or a, yeah. a grind at that point where I'm assuming you'd prefer people play the things that they want to do in the game. Yeah, um, yeah. we want so. to recognize that someone has done something they enjoyed yes. rather than demand that they do something they hate. Yeah. And, 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 and but that, that, that distinction kind of attacks the very heart of what comp is trying to accomplish in the first yeah, place. Yeah, absolutely. Because you kind of I can't have one you. without the you other. You can't do both. Because the whole point of comp is that you do everything even if you don't like it, which yeah. is like, yeah, it's really tricky. So with relation to that, I think... Uh, Combat was removed from the completionist cape. Reaper title was, you know, removed from from the requirements, which is to get one kill at every boss in the game. Uh, just to ask you, like, full on blanket, why did that happen, and how do you feel about that happening? So it's it's it, it was done because kind of because of the, the the checklist thing that we were talking about of like because comp was seen as it's the next end game goal beyond max, right? It's like what you what why am I even playing RuneScape? Well, I'm, I'm I, if you want a goal, if you want a specific yeah. goal. Comp is the next goal on the, on on that on that list, and but but so the the, the re, it's not the combat in and of itself doesn't need an exception, but the problem is combat is very skill intensive skill in the sort of player skill sense. Yeah, like, like the actions per minute. It's yeah, not a exactly. casual thing. It's not a time based yeah. grind per se. It's a skill based grind. It's hard, grind. right? Yes. I mean, so I, I, combat players would say it's not that hard. But it's it's hard. Well, I mean, it's easy to say once you've learned something. Yeah. Hey, I I know how to do this, so this isn't hard. But but, it, but it, killing any boss is a step. Well, any any reasonably high level boss is a step above like grinding out a ninety nine in terms of having to learn how to do it rather than just putting more time into it. That is very different yes. kinds of content. It's yeah, it's hugely different to put time into something yeah. and have a linear progression versus having to actually study something, practice something, put yeah. you know that kind of effort into it. It's a lot more engaged. Absolutely. Yeah. I. It, so yeah, it was it was the things that I couldn't just grind out were the things that didn't necessarily belong on comp, which is tricky because then it, it sort of now now that's that has changed the identity of the comp cape. Yeah, absolutely. Because it, it's now changed from I've engaged with all content in the game to I've engaged with, with all grindy all content, in grindy the game. content in the game. And yeah, I'm missing which is big a very different. Of the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which absolutely. is a very different identity. I would say I'm not entirely happy with where it's ended up in that regard. Um, I could see, uh, the, 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 I don't know if you remember the comp cape rework, it was, uh, the, the idea there was to d subdivide it into different different categories of achievement and then the comp cape would be the combination of them. So there would be a combat cape and a skilling cape and a questing cape and uh, I'm simplifying slightly. They would combine together to form the comp cape. I could see perhaps a simplified version of that where there's essentially like a step between comp and trim comp which is like comp plus or something like that. That I'm, included I'm, combat I'm not promising picks. anything yeah, but no, like when I think about how you could solve this problem slightly more simply, yeah. Look, so um, it, it would make sense for it to be trimmed, except there's already a trim comp, but you know what I mean? It's comp plus a little bit, because yes. I've also done Reaper or whatever. So it, it's, yeah, comp without combat and comp with combat could be sort of recognized slightly Somewhere. separately. That, yeah. I think that would be a good way to compromise on that. It's interesting. It's uh, compromise. It's, it's tough to... <laughs> yeah. uh, it's tough to do as well because that a certain subset of players are still going to feel forced to engage with the content they don't want to. If yes. it's added, if it's any kind of yes. check mark anywhere, people are or a certain subset of people are going to feel like they have to engage with it. And I suppose that's a big part of the removal of it. Is I'm assuming it was just a big pain point for a lot of players that wanted to grind things yeah. and didn't want to learn things. Yeah, that we well, I I, I don't think didn't want to learn is entirely fair, but like there there are large groups of our players for whom there are different barriers high level to entry is just for, out of for, for bossing. Yeah. There yeah. are just it's a different kind of gameplay experience from it might from be that if they, they had like a personal tutor that could guide them through it, they probably could get a kill. Oh absolutely. But they don't necessarily have access to that. Yeah, it requires I mean and, and that's a whole different different topic yeah. that we're not going to get into today. But with regard to, you know, what it takes to get into learning the combat system and and sort of I'm probably of the opinion, just um, before we, you know, shift back on topic, that if combat was easier to learn or there were better tools in the game to learn combat, comp and combat probably stay together. 
they probably don't have to be separated in the way that they were. I guess it depends on the yeah, it depends on the type of content. We we have in the past focused on making quite exclusive content. I could I my preference, and I don't I don't mean this as a policy choice, but yeah, my, my personal preference would be, I think bosses should probably ship with story modes, as the EDs have story modes. Oh, just Although, as an alternative. Yeah. For that player. But then, but then I'm not sure that necessarily answers the comp question because if I've only completed, if I've only done the EDs on story mode, have I really done the EDs from the point of view of I've engaged with all the content in the game? The story modes for the EDs are so easy that you could argue that I've barely really engaged with that at all. I've seen the story. I've seen the. Yeah. I've seen the names of the bosses, but have I really engaged with the content? It's tricky to say. It's a check mark. If so I haven't sat down and learned the boss's mechanics and learned how to set up my bars and learned what gear I need for this boss, have I really engaged with the content? I mean, I think the honest answer is no, but then we're straight back to like... But with regard to how comp is considered across the game, I think yeah. you could probably count it. If we shift gears a little bit to the trim completion escape, uh, the trim comp cape is designed to be, you know, a little closer to possibly what the initial comp idea was, yes, which was completing so, yeah. the game. Yeah. Trim comp cape also has little to no PVMing on it. Um, and is there, you know, is the rationale for that different because trim is supposed to be a little more in line with completing everything? I think everything? so. I think it's it's a player type problem. And again, I think you could do like a trim comp plus that has more PVM requirements on it in, in a similar sort of sense of thinking about the comp cape. One of the things that we think about a lot is player types. Like who is in, when we talk about when we design content, we're always thinking about who this content is aimed for. And you can simplify that down to PVM or Skiller, Questa. But actually, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. Like you might have sort of um, you know quick, intense combat, which is satisfying for a short period, or long, grindy content that you have to grind out for a long time. And the basic fact of comp and trim is that by nature of what they are, they are inherently grindy. Yes. Like that's kind of what Absolutely. they are. Absolutely. That's kind of the point. And so for the for the intense PVMer, there's actually quite a lot of reward structures already for PVM, right? Yeah, you've got boss logs and yeah. Reaper title and yeah. Gold Reaper and all and, that. And, and and literally just the drop tables and economy of PVM yes. itself, right? There's a lot to engage with with PVM. If you're a more grindy person who just likes grinding out well, this is, to an extent, like there's there's a there's a there's a player attitude, this is the kind of player I am more am, of of just sort of grinding things out slowly over time. Um it sort of doesn't matter what it is. The point is to just tick it off. That's yeah. completionism, right? Yeah. Like when you're going through essence, trying to, that is I guess, I guess we think about it in terms of like achievement systems in other games. Like we've got, you've got your like, you know, find the million pigeons, separate from complete the game on the hardest difficulty. Those are two very different kinds of of, of achievement. Yes. And comp for me veers much more towards the grind out a million pigeons sort of design, simply because we already do a really good job of delivering on rewarding. For people who are hyper engaged, for people who are really um, interested in high performance, we already recognize that in quite a lot of ways. And content coming up is going to do an even better job of that, I think. But that person who just wants to sit and, and sort of and, and grind stuff out, like, why would I bother to grind out a million pigeons if the platinum trophy is locked behind the hardest difficulty, which I can't complete? Like, comp for me sits in that in that low skill space. And I, I think I it's think, low skill, high effort, high time, well, exactly, high time, yeah. and high because it was always yeah. going to be low because because there's no way to design a comp cape that isn't high effort, high time. Yeah. Um, by 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 putting a high skill requirement on that as well, we have a piece of content which is essentially only aimed at people who are both high effort, high time, and high skill, high performance. Yeah, which... and that's an extremely narrow part of our player base. Would you ever do a completionist cape that was specific to combat? So completing all to. of the combat yeah. achievements in the game. So it's not. I mean, thinking about thinking about like what, anything else. Just, like if we think about like what trim plus could be, then that could be yeah something. Like yeah, that. part of that. I'm not, I can't promise that. Concept, yeah, no, yes, of course. Just like how, really how well you feel about that. View, a cape yeah. for the people that just engage yeah. with no, the one piece like that. of content. The combat equivalent of the quest cape. In relation to, I mean, earlier you spoke on. Do um, you think there's future content that is going to reward you know end game end game PVMers and give them a, a sense of accomplishment? Uh, I'm assuming you're referring to the Zemrock boss. Yeah. Okay. So that has that has a high score table for enrage. Yes. And that. I mean, sorry, that's not the only way to, to think about that kind of content, but I think that's a really good way of sort of recognizing. Absolutely. It's a place in game you can see the, yeah. the top people. And I think that's something that people in the PVM community have been asking for for a long time yeah. because it's really easy as just a way to, you know, make their efforts and their skill, you know, yeah, it broadcasts exactly, it, it yeah. gives them a platform yeah. and it's appreciated. I think the first time that was ever done was when 4K Telos was first, first done by a player named Sadden. 
uh, there's now a, a line of in-game dialogue. Yeah. Um, and I think little touches like that, um, and you know, take it further to a leaderboard. I think that's a really good way to make PVMers still feel included because there's definitely an aspect of us and them. Um, and I'm definitely, I, I relate more. I mean, I'm more of an Ironman than anything now, but I relate to the PVM community. That's sort of my yeah. bread and butter. That's the thing that yeah. keeps me playing the game. And I enjoy like casually when I'm playing RuneScape on my own time. And I definitely get a, get a sense that there is a good amount of overlap, but at the same time, there are players that feel like, okay, so all of these aspects of the game, we've got these capes, we've got these particles, we've got these reward spaces. And then for PVMing, you know, it might be a title. It might be a it might be an arbitrary check mark, but it doesn't feel necessarily like it's been paid attention to in the same way. Yeah, yeah. No, and I think yeah. I I, I don't want I don't mean at all that we're like oh everything's perfect and we don't need to change anything. Oh yeah, of course. But I think we're definitely focusing on 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 doing more with that. Um, and I think the the high school tables is a good example of that. Fantastic. Okay, well that's all the time we have. But uh, thank you so much for joining. Cheers. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you all very soon.